like that after y'all left. And y'all left What's at like balance? seven. I hope you're ready to go to jail for armed larcen larceny. What did I take? You know what you took. No, I don't. You know what you took. Just admit it, you're on camera right now. What did you take? I didn't take anything. Not my nutcracker? And that's not a sexual term, it's an actual nutcracker? No, like a, like a little Christmas guy? Like a six foot tall nutcracker. That only a... <laughs> I wish I could take credit for that because it would be great yard decor, but I didn't take it. You're going to jail, Kayla. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. What the hell is wrong with our set? And then I look at this, I do some investigation, and you look at Normal World's community tab, and they have a freaking picture with it. Is that how it looked when This you is how it looked when I got in here! Why don't you clean the set? When you get to work every day, you come here, and you clean the carpet, and you make sure the mannequins and all the crap of Mr. Pepperoncini is put upright. Yeah, don't walk in here, guys. You guys see what my set looks like? You guys know who did this? You guys know who did this to my set? No, seriously. No clue. Supposedly, Kayla Bennett's gonna go to jail, guys. Kayla, you're toast. Normal world took her. Jimmy, why would you allow... Look at this, Jimmy. You think this is funny? You realize how... I don't think this is funny. You realize how long I had to look? on freaking Amazon and Facebook Marketplace to be able to get an authentic six foot tall and they don't even have it plugged in right. They don't even have it plugged in right. Jimmy, put your eyes over here and start carrying this. Got it, got it. This is really nice. Yeah, I know, it's really, really heavy. heavy. Keep the middle of the light on it. Very heavy. Oh gosh, this is heavy. Yeah. Okay, uh, oh gosh. Don't break the camera. Let's uh, walk backwards. Here, let's, yeah, let's get it, let's get over like our shoulders like this or something. Can we go ahead and through here? Oh my gosh, how big is this? Oh, that's there we go. go. This is ridiculous, this is war. Dave, this is absolute, this is violence. It's violence. Jimmy, quit struggling. I know, you have a lot of the heavy weight, I know. That's, <laughs> I mean, you know gravity's not real, so that's... <laughs> I just want to start off by saying that identity theft is not a joke. What was stolen from this set was not just a six foot tall nutcracker that I bought on Facebook Marketplace, but it was also this show's culture. Uh, everybody knows Christmas is the best holiday. And uh, I have that Nutcracker on set because of the happy joy that it brings me thinking about all the Christmases I had underneath the Christmas tree and actually cracking walnuts with a Nutcracker. So this is war for the people that are watching this normal world. Dave Landau, quarterback Garrett, Kim, who... Uh, Alex, Kim is in the chat right now actively talking shit. Well, she can talk a little smack because it took Jimmy and I two people to carry it, and she's a small Asian lady, and she was able to carry it by herself. It is herself. very, very impressive, actually. I gotta uh, say that. Give that, her credit. That yeah, we gotta give her a lot of credit. So she has the strength of a uh, gymnast or a uh, ballerina. She's very strong, even though she looks small. She packs a mighty punch. But uh, this is an act of violence to me. I don't think it's okay. I don't like jokes. Uh, I don't like being the butt of jokes. This show is a serious kid show. And all the kids that are watching this are probably really disappointed because a lot of kids count on this show uh, to learn about crazy conspiracies and um, how to use words like uh, animosity and uh, anonymity correctly. So this is war. That's all I'm going to say, and that's all I'm going to comment on that. All right, guys, welcome to the show. It's Primetime 99, Alex Stein. I'm your host, Alejandro Stein, and we have an action-packed evening in store for you. And I'm doing okay, even though I have been 
I feel a little bit assaulted uh, physically. Anytime you have something stolen from you, it kind of makes you feel very vulnerable. And I don't really like that, but the show must go on. And speaking of the show must go on, for Jonte Porter, the show is unfortunately over for good when it comes to the NBA. That's right, guys. Jonte Porter has been banned for life from the NBA for gambling on games and also allegedly throwing games. That's right. He would have prop bets, very particular prop bets, where he would fake an injury. So why is this important, Alex? Why do you start off the show with this? Because I want you guys to know that professional athletes and professional sports are entertainment. It's rigged. You know, if the, if the own players are cheating in order to win prop bets, then the league doesn't have any integrity. And when you really look at this, the, the most egregious part of this all is that Jonte, Jonte Porter only benefited roughly $20,000 from his over 1,000 bets. So that means he was losing some of those bets, and he, and he was throwing bets. So. Well, the funny part is there was one parlay where he bet against his team, and the team won. <laughs> so uh, that so he's, he's actually he, mentally ill. Yeah, no, he's, he's bad at betting, and he was playing the game. So it's pretty tough. That's really bad. He bet against his team. Well, that shows you guys he's so incompetent he can't even throw the game himself. Mm -hmm. So uh, we want to talk about that cheating because also I recently tried to cheat myself by paying off the refs at the Arlington Renegades UFL champions of 2023. So it's just kind of a reality becoming or fiction becoming reality, right, Jimmy? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, maybe someone else paid the refs more because apparently the Renegades ended up losing, even though we tried to pay them. What was it, ten grand? Yeah, it doesn't matter the amount. The fact they didn't take it, they actually have integrity. Okay, so do we need to do the ad read now? Yes. Guys, seriously, uh, focus on me. I can give you the old, uh, you know, elevator pitch to, to, to sell you this coffee. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that tonight. What I want to do is I want to beg you to buy this coffee. I want to just beg you to please go to cashbrew.com and go buy some of this coffee. If you guys love me, which I know some of you do, I'm sure some people are hate watching this right now because believe it or not, I do have some stalkers and haters that don't want me to succeed. But for the people that do want this show to succeed, support me by going to cashbrew.com and using some of this freaking uh, promo code for 10% off because this is some of the most delicious Roasted, double roasted, right, Jimmy? Isn't it roasted two times? <laughs> two times and two times the caffeine. Guys, I mean, and it's organic. So you're not getting all of the, that. you know, a lot of coffee companies, their stuff comes from aborted fetal cells, the flavoring. Not here. No aborted fetal cells. Is that correct, Jimmy? That is correct. So if you want a coffee that doesn't have any aborted fetal cell residue, <laughs> please consider this. And if you want to, if you're interested in stopping Asian hate, uh, the owner of this is uh, part Korean, so we are an Asian international company. Well, not international, American company, excuse me. I don't want to misquote what we are, but we do help the Asian community, and we help all communities and the cat community. When you buy this coffee, all proceeds are going to a cat charity. That's right. I'm virtue signaling, am I? Yeah, a little bit. Why? Because I love cats, and I love you too, and that's why I really appreciate you watching this show, and I really, 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 really appreciate it when you use that promo code PRIMETIME at CASPRU.com. All right. You know who doesn't drink PRIMETIME's CASPRU coffee? Who? who? Dave Landau and Quarter Black Garrett. Okay. That's Is that it. supposed to be funny? I mean, it's we're starting a beef with them. I'm not starting a beef with anybody. I don't want to get fired. I'm going to oh, let okay. them do all this. I'm not going to do anything, Jimmy. Yeah, Alex, I've always known that you were the bigger man. I am the bigger man. I actually am taller and bigger and larger. Well, uh, and I thought that's what started it. They're so jealous you have your own coffee that they stole your nutcracker in a fit of rage. Okay, Jimmy, I'm about to turn off your mic, dude. Oh. What are you? What, are you just <laughs> making stuff up, dude? You don't need to improv on the show anymore. How about a no improv rule for okay. you, Jimmy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the bad thing is I wrote that down. I wasn't. No, improv. you did not I write that down. That did down. you actually write that <laughs> down? Yeah, it's in the teleprompter. Here. <laughs> Jimmy, you did. I don't think that you really went to Princeton, and I'm starting to think you might be an FBI agent. <laughs> well, oh, let's. Well, we don't want to talk about that. Yeah, you like. did put that. You did write that on the prompter. Look, <laughs> Nathan's showing it right now. Dude, that is bad. That is only a joke that would be written by an FBI agent. And you can watch him open for Alex Stein when we're in Austin. Yeah, if you guys want to see that, you want to see a man 
dying live on stage from, <laughs> from embarrassment. Please. And this Friday as well at the Plano House of Comedy. So, or Sunday. When did I say Friday? Yeah, I said Friday. Thank you. Like when I misspoke. And remember when you connect, connected me? You corrected me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that was that was that was wrong because you actually used the right word. You did use, mean to use animosity, but I figured with your comedy shows, you meant Sunday. I'm trying to think it's Friday, and then I'm trying to do a little rope a dope. Then they look, oh, it's really Sunday. Oh, so they have two more days to get yeah, ready. Yeah, exactly. That's I smart. want them. I want them. It's like how we got to get the link up early so we can get the people in the chat early, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. early adoption. If they thought the show's on Friday and then it's on Sunday, they're a little early to the show. Two days, so what? All mm -hmm. right, uh, and now we're going to do the South Carolina recap. Are we having? Yep. Guys, you're not going to believe it. What happened to Don Terrius and I? I was so lucky to be speaking for Uncensored America at the University of South Carolina, where the women's NCAA champion Gamecocks, which that sounds, are the women called Gamecocks too, Jimmy? Yes, or Ladycocks. So they don't, they're not called Gamecocks, they're called Ladycocks. No, they actually are, which is hilarious. Lady yeah, that, I know, that is real, but so they're the Ladycocks, and Don Staley likes ladies with cocks? <laughs> Probably. I mean, she supports them. She playing supports women's sports. Lady with Cox playing. Yeah. So she wants actual Lady Cox on the Lady Cox. One hundred percent. I mean, it checks out to me. I mean, I mean the, this whole that mascot name makes so much more sense now. I know. So we love you, Don Staley, but mm -hmm. the University of South Carolina does not love me back. So let's check out the festivities from this weekend. All right, guys. I'm here with my wife's boyfriend, Don Terrius. Trying to talk to the young students here at University of South Carolina. Hi, maybe, students. Maybe try to get some reparations for this. It's about time. Homeless black man. We'll see if they want to help him out. You guys want to help out my wife's boyfriend, Don Terrius? How you ladies doing? All right. Y'all got any extra money or anything? Yeah. He's struggling. I'm from Brooklyn. Like, things are hard out there. Are y'all from New York? Y'all love New York, guys. Damn. Y'all look oh, rich, man. though. Y'all got all the jewelry and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a on a blimp. I am rich. It's just he's not. I don't want to give him any of my extra money because I yeah. like to. Because I like to go to Cancun, Mexico. And I like oh, to go to the casino. Comes out. I'm not trying to use all my casino money on his ad. Hey, but he he lets me sleep with his wife. So it's yeah, okay. it's my wife's boyfriend. Yeah, wife's boyfriend. My wife's boyfriend. Okay. Yeah, so I went. Is that weird? <laughs> <laughs> Your wife's boyfriend? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm vaccine injured. Oh, okay. I can't, my penis doesn't work at this Yeah. Time. How come you guys are black and have money? Yeah, how is that <laughs> possible? No, I have money, I just don't have cash. Oh, oh my all right, God. All right. You sound like a New Yorker. What are you ladies doing over here? Are you guys mourning the death of O.J. Simpson? Um, what do you think about O.J. dying? I literally found out like two days late. You guys oh are too young. Do you remember what OJ did? No, we're no. too young. I don't think we were born. This is my wife's boyfriend, and I would never okay. kill him for sleeping with my wife like OJ did that. I'm not a jealous a-hole. And remember, guys, it's a very good culture here. This is my wife's boyfriend, Don Terrius. You guys should all go to school here. You're going to have a very rich culture. Black, white, Filipino, Asian, Hispanic. You get the whole litany of culture here. What a message. That's what America's about. He's one of the he's one of the professors here. That's awesome. Sign yeah. up for my class. I see you guys there. The I expect strict, I know a lot of you I guys expect are strictly age. White. I would rather it be a few more Hispanic and black people on the tour, but we will accept you at this university. So if you guys want to come, you're gonna give them all A's. All A's. You guys yeah, look this like type of, this is the type of teacher. This Thank is the you. future here. The future. Thank you guys. Oh yeah, my, well let's see how it is. You got to take a bath. Yeah. Don Terrace has to get oh, clean. Deeper. Oh no, that's it. Is it deep? Yeah. Jump in the water, it's great guys! <laughs> Everyone come on! <laughs> Woo! This is what we do, wait, let me get some... Yeah guys, you guys are gonna love the water! It's amazing! Don Terrius, tell them how good of a university this oh, is! Oh, it's amazing guys, just just the water alone guys, I mean, looks what it's gonna do with my skin, look, woo! Welcome I to love the it. University of South Carolina! University of South Carolina! Yeah! University of South Carolina! Yeah! Woo! Let's go hit the books, Ontario. Yeah. Look how nice it is. Yeah, it's nice and cool. I like it. We can learn a lot. Wow. We can learn a lot here. Yeah, I would say that, that we can check any book out we want. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're visitors. 
Can we not walk in Lazarus? Line, 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 line. This place. Oh, we need a sticker. We gotta get a sticker. Can we get a sticker over here? Yeah. Guest sticker. Yeah, I think I'm Oh my god. Okay. I got a sticker too. Yeah, put one. Put it on your breath. Maybe I need two. Can Thank you get a sticker? Thank you so much. Yeah. Let's go. This is education, guys. We're gonna learn. A lot of people don't realize is that college is a great experience. You can learn a lot. There's a lot of good stuff in this book. It's all about schooling, guys. Stay you guys in school. Can learn a lot. Stay in school. You don't want to freaking go to jail and get arrested and not be able to get a college degree. Right. So you guys gotta stay in school and mm -hmm. learn. You got a kitchen in here too. Look wow. at this. Guys, this is my wife's boyfriend, Don Terrius. If anybody wants to donate to him, if you guys have any extra money, he's struggling. How you guys Does doing? Do you have any money here? Can we help out Anyone? a black man, struggling black man, my wife's boyfriend? Are you guys rich? You are rich. Can you guys, you guys have any extra money to spare? Don't be racist, guys. How about a black man? I feel like everybody in this campus is kind of anti-black. You guys love black people, right? We love black people here. What's up? Come on. Why? Because you cannot come in the library like that. Why not? Well, you got to see us get kicked out. Do we have a longer version? Who edited that, Brandon? Yeah, I did. There will be a full extended version on Blaze TV tomorrow. Okay, behind the paywall. You spend 99 cents by going to blazetv.com slash primetime using the promo code primetime99. You're going to get it for 99 cents. You're going to be able to see that whole entire clip, and it gets really crazy once we get kicked out. So, uh, And plug the Monday show. We're almost there. We are almost there. Hopefully this Monday we should be uh, we should be ready to go, I but think. But we need a few more people, so sign up. It's that 99 is true. Cents. It's and not I, 100 yet, they and, said. And I and I offered to pay for you know Chat Rat's first month, and actually someone did message me, and so I paid... Uh, Dr. Long Monkey, one dollar last night. Dr. Long Monkey's like one of the biggest fans. He doesn't have one dollar. Apparently, he's a super fan and super poor. But I'm happy to help. Gosh, Dr. Long Monkey, I'm I really appreciate you watching the show, but you might want to go get a job. Uh, maybe turn this off <laughs> and go to Monster.com. Is that still a website, Jimmy, to get jobs? I have no idea. I think GoDaddy is the whatever. Go go to LinkedIn. Get off this right now <laughs> and make a LinkedIn account and beg for a job because I'm telling you, there are illegal Haitian Congolese immigrants that have more money than you that have a dollar, and that's. Not good. That's really not, not good. But we do appreciate you watching the show. And I hope he used that money because if he needs a dollar that bad, Jimmy, he probably went and bought like a bag of chips. I mean, uh, well, I mean ramen or something. That's what I'm saying. He should have, he went and probably got three packs of ramen. That's insane. Okay. Is our guest ready? Uh, yes, she is. Now, guys, we're so lucky and blessed because of my dumb producer last time. He caused a big stink last time this guest was on the show, and he's really paid a big price. And we're bringing her back on because we want to fully apologize. So with all that being said, everybody, welcome on the Red-Headed Libertarian, a.k.a. my girl Josie. Josie, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you, Alex? Well, we have to address the elephant in the room. I just want to say last time what happened was egregious, and it was nothing, had nothing, uh, not my fault at all, right, Jimmy? Not your fault. It was my fault. Thank you. So apologize, please. And I'm sorry as well on Jimmy's behalf, but my idiot producer, he went to Princeton. He jo thinks he's so smart. Josie, you're beautiful, and I'm sorry. I forgive you. <gasps> Thank you. Thank you. See, Josie, that is why you're a badass. You're a libertarian. You're not going to hold grudges. So do we even want to play a little clip of that interaction? Yeah, well, just so they know what we're oh referencing. Oh, my gosh. Okay, it's play only the 15 short clip. seconds. Okay, play the short clip. Yeah, take it full. Take it full. Oh, my gosh! I'm sorry. Fired. It's up. Uh, Right. Bye. I'm Bryce, married, and my wife doesn't dress like a horse. So oh my God, Bryce, that. the shot's fired. Jimmy, get you're them off pimped, the screen. You're getting pimped by Seth over some beer so he can sell oh, some Jimmy. beer. Oh, Jimmy. So, Josie, we want to apologize, and uh, we're, we're, we brought on a special guest who's going to be able to apologize to you live in person. Do we have the guest? Okay. Josie, this is Darnell. This is Bryson's dad. He would like to apologize to you. Darnell, what do you have to say to Josie? Bryson Gray's dad. And my son was right. You are a harlot. Shut! No! no. I can't hear Darnell. You can't hear Darnell? No. Kick Darnell off! Kick Darnell off! He was supposed to apologize. 
Oh my gosh, Josie, I'm sorry about that. We brought him on. He was supposed to be I'm supposed to apologize, and he said that Colander's demonic again. Oh well, uh, Bryson looks exactly like him, so he <laughs> <laughs> does look a lot like him. Can you hear him now? Are you there, Darnell? Yes, I am. I hear Darnell. Hi, Darnell. What do you want to say to her, Darnell? How you doing? Please apologize to her, Darnell, for what your son did to her. I'm just not apologizing at all. I refuse to apologize. That calendar was demonic. No, demonic. it was not, Darnell. Darnell Gray, do not be like that. Oh, yeah, I'm being like that. I don't give a damn. Okay. Can you just please say you're sorry, Darnell? No, I'm not. I refuse to. Like I say, that calendar was demonic. It was. I don't care what nobody say. And my son was right about you. You are a harlot. What do you have to say to that, Josie? It's April. I love that. Ashley St. Clair, friend of the show. We love her. Yep. Darnell, why are you doing that to this beautiful young lady? I'm just telling you how we feel. Okay, get him off I'm the show. Get honest. him off the show. Mr. Gray, you're gone. Okay, sorry about that. Josie, That's okay. what the heck is going on? You're talking about hot guys are ruining marriage. I don't think I've ruined that many marriages. I probably slept with like, I slept with like maybe three married women. Okay, that's that's you gotta you gotta bring those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers. Is that real? Is that so, is that really bad? rookie numbers? <laughs> My theory is that dating apps um, on dating apps you don't see women who we would consider nines or tens. Um, you might see an eight every now and then, but the nines and the tens, they don't need dating apps, no matter how lonely or sad they are. They, they don't, you don't see them on dating apps. Okay. So when it comes to dating apps, you see kind of the women that you look at as six and sevens as being like the queens of the dating apps. These okay. are like the hottest of the dating apps. And then when you see men on dating apps, you see men that might be nines and tens and they're, they're the man horse. So the man whores are slumming it with the sixes and the sevens on the dating app because they see them as low hanging fruit. So, you know, they, they go, they date or they do whatever the hookup culture, the sixes and the sevens are hooking up with the nines and the tens. And then, you know, these women, they're able to focus on their career and I don't know, whatever else, um, single late twenties women do. And then they get to a point where they're like, all right, maybe I want to get married and have kids now. Maybe now's the time. But they're not finding any tens that want to marry them. And so a lot of them are like, well, I know I'm a 10 because I just hooked up with all these tens. So they don't end up getting married and or or they settle, settle for a six because mids marry mids. Let's, you know, be mm. honest here. Wow. Uh, so that's a uh, that's that's my very unpopular take no, it, <laughs> on. Uh, Josie, I think crazy. I think what you said does. There are a lot, a lot of true things, but there's all, also this other thing. Is I forget whose video it was, but somebody made a catfish account. They were pretending to be a hot girl, and they put like a picture of them as a hot girl, and they showed mm -hmm. how many messages they got from guys. It was literally like I think it was like 1,100 messages in 48 hours or something. You know, I mean, maybe they're accepting everybody, but don't you think it's almost easier? For women to meet guys like I, I feel like girls on dating apps no offense to them I'm sure there's a lot of girls on them they have I guess more options than the men on the dating apps you don't think that no no you said that they made a picture of a very hot girl and yeah. they put it up right mm -hmm. okay that's a nine or a ten that they put up so this is why the nines and the tens don't need to go on dating apps because of the 1100 messages they get just by existing I don't judge women by their outside I judge women by their inside so for me it's hard to tell <laughs> sixes and tens and I, I don't i just i like soul yeah so for me that yeah. numerical system it sounds kind of andrew tate-ish a little yeah a little bit you like andrew tate i have watched andrew tate i like tristan i um, like both i do like the tates i think they're good i think they're right did you see that tweet how they're talking about um White men aren't having enough babies, and they're right because I don't have a baby because I'm scared to death. I can't even financially afford one. But once I got a baby, I mean, let's be real. If I'm going to be real, I need to be more real on the show. Mm -hmm. Once you have a kid, your whole life is dedicated to that kid, correct? Yeah, I've got three kids, and my life is dedicated to them. Of course, and that's how it should be. I guess maybe I'm just a little selfish. I'm not ready to dedicate my life to a child. Is that make me? Does that make me evil? What does that? What do, what, do, what do you psychoanalyze that? And if it is evil, you can be honest. Why is that? Like, am I selfish for not wanting to have to? You know, I guess focus my whole entire life on a child yet. 
No. If you decide you want to have kids, you'll get to that point and you're going to know when you want to have kids. And um, it might never happen. It might happen. You know, you might wake up one day and be like, yeah, I, I think I'm ready now. It's not selfish. It's just you live in your life. Well, Jimmy, my Kill producer, he had a kid and he's a terrible dad. Uh, Jimmy, Who? Jimmy, the guy that the guy I should fire and he was oh. fired for a little bit. Jimmy, tell him where you like to take your daughter, Tiffany. <clears throat> uh, Katie Trail Ice House. You know, what the, you know what the Katie Trail Ice House is, Josie? No. It's my favorite sports bar. It's, it's every, <laughs> whatever monthly, it is a bar, and every month, like the TABC, Texas Alcohol and Beverage Commission, they put out the totals of like what bars sell amount of alcohol, and Katie Trail Ice House is literally always in the top three. It, not only is it a bar, it's like the most popular bar well, in Dallas. Well, well, Alex, one up, you do, you, do you see what I did Monday night? I couldn't no. get a babysitter. I blocked you. Well, oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, my my wife had a girls' night, and I had a stand up show, so I wore my baby and my dad holder while I did stand up. I told only dad jokes. Oh my gosh, Jimmy, <laughs> Josie, what kind of dad brings their newborn baby to well, a, a bar, so or much she's, less she's, even worse? She's five open... months, so she's not newborn. She's a little. Oh, so you're saying that's old born being five yeah. months old? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> a little bit. So it's not a newborn, it's an oldborn old baby. Born, old born, yes, that's the term. Does, the babe, does Tiffany know 2 plus 2 yet? Not yet. So she's probably not legally supposed to be at a bar, is that correct? No, but I got a really good fake. Josie, did you ever take yeah. your, your kids to a bar when they were uh, newborn babies? No. And Jimmy's vaccinated. <laughs> Jimmy's fully vaccinated with Johnson & Johnson. <laughs> Tell well, her, Jimmy. So no, you don't you don't have to always make good choices. You can make bad choices. You just gotta learn from them. Mm -hmm. Did you learn from your bad choices, Jimmy? No. Which one? No, he continues to do it. Because there's some I have learned, some I have not. <laughs> Did you learn from getting fully vaccinated or taking your baby into a bar? Um, so no to both. Uh, cause the, the, the Fauci ouchie, I got to do a sick Italy trip and, uh, the joy from the Italy outweighs my future health issues. Um, and I had a great, Tiffany that's had a what great Kate Middleton time. said, that's what Kate Middleton said. And look what happened to her. <laughs> well, hopefully I last a little longer than her. And then, uh, baby Tiffany, she, she loved the bar. I mean, oh my gosh, she was so popular. Everyone was paying attention to her. People were going yeah, to her and she was laughing. It was great. So drunk people were yelling at your baby yes, at this bar yes, and that's a good thing. I mean, she enjoyed it. How she, many childhood vaccines did your child have? Uh, I don't think any one. I think one. She had more than one. She had one when she was born. It hurt my feelings. What They're do you like, mean it she's, hurt she's, you? she's 20 minutes old and you're going to put a needle in her leg. Are you? I know. Why would you let him do that? That's weird. Are your babies vaccinated, Josie? My babies are vaccinated. Not against like the flu or COVID or anything like that, but just normal. Oh, so you're pro childhood, childhood vaccine. So you're not like Dell Bigtree or whatever, high wire guy? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I chose to get my children vaccinated. My grandfather survived uh, polio um, when he was four. He had it in his throat. So that was an important one for me. But um, I mean, I just I just did it. Um, my kids are all happy, healthy, well adjusted. One of them's a genius. So one of only one, only one of them. Are the other two dumb? White geniuses. Okay. But one of them. Oh, uh, Alex, <laughs> we got a $20 super chat. Yes. Um, maybe I'm just reading it. I don't know if you should answer. It says, what does Paige think of Alex's stance on children? It's kind of a personal question, Matthew. Well, Paige is young. I don't think she's ready to have a baby, but she does want to have kids. Oh, okay. Oh, speaking of Josie, actually, let's talk about my personal life. Um, I <laughs> spoke at the University of South Carolina, and I spoke for Uncensored America. And after the event, um, the student organization went to go eat. And they planned this. I didn't plan this. And they picked Twin Peaks as the restaurant. And I guess I, I thought I told Paige that it, we went to Twin Peaks, but I just told her today, somehow it came out today, and she was very disappointed in me. Is that, what, what do you think as a relationship expert yourself, what do you think that is, um, that she got mad that went to a restaurant? And, and she said that's the same, it's Hooters. Because sometimes I joke around where she's like, where should we go eat? And I say this joke, like, let's go to Hooters. And it's a joke, I don't even, I'm a plant-based pimp, I don't even eat meat, and uh, so I don't want to even go to Hooters. But she gets mad at that joke. Uh, how do I rectify the situation? So Twin Peaks, I'm not familiar with it. That's like a Hooters equivalent. Kind of, yeah. Kind of, and she was upset with you about that. Yeah, they say it's better. They say the food quality is better at Twin Peaks. Yeah. 
did you tell her that she was better looking than every woman in that restaurant? She was. The, most of the, it was a lot of guys in the restaurant. Most of the women looked like they had been using methamphetamine. Yeah. So, you know, just, just reassure her that she's the hottest woman on the planet. And that, that should be, that should be enough. Paige, you're the hottest woman on the planet, babe. Please forgive me. I know you're mm -hmm. watching this. You're with the cats right now. Just forgive the pimp on a blimp. When I went in that restaurant, I looked at the menu and my food only. And uh, the methed out waitresses, were, they, were, they were on so much speed, they didn't even look at me back. So please, babe, don't be mad. When I get home, um, don't try to stab me or do anything physical to me. Forgive him, Paige, please. There we go. And if she does dump me, should I get an AI girlfriend? I don't know. AI girlfriends are kind of the male equivalent for uh, females on dating sites. What do you mean? Wait, because now, but how do you get sexual gratification from an AI girlfriend? I guess, does it get naked for you and so? I, I'm not sure. I don't understand the AI the way that that works. But, uh, Alex, I can, when, I, can, I can explain a little. So you can customize the AI girlfriend to basically tell you things you like. And this fella here uh, was spending over $10,000 a month on AI girlfriends and he said he said he used it like some dudes play video games and I guess you know jerked off or something well I think it's kind of the same way in that you're not going to see nines and tens getting AI girlfriends you're not even going to see sixes and sevens or even fives getting AI girlfriends this is solely a sub four relationship so you're gonna have the twos and the threes that have these girlfriends and these girlfriends are tens so the negative impact is that you're going to have this entitlement of men who feel, you know, men who are subpar, who feel as though they are deserving of nines and tens because they dated one on AI. They created one and that could lead to never marrying or having children. Um, same, same exact issue as with the dating apps and women. You sure do rate people on numbers a lot, Josie. Is that, that has to be an unpopular opinion, right? People have to get mad at that. Is that correct? Yeah. People are really mad. I just, I think it's funny. It will. I, well, is, I'm, it, go, go I'm a solid point seven solid. So I, I'm a mid and I, you think I you're mid, on. you think you're mid. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Why you're, I think you're definitely be not mid. I would rate you in the nines, I think. Right. I mean, you would say, so you think you're in the sevens, huh? Uh, six, sixes. No, you're a sixer. Why? Because you have kids. Is that does that hurt you? Are you yeah. thinking the number uh, thing? No, value goes down a little bit because I have three children. <laughs> yeah, that's what they uh. say. See, I don't think that's low value. I mean, I wouldn't be a good stepdad, but uh, mm -hmm. I guess it does have to make dating a little bit harder, though, having kids, just because you have to worry about the kids, right? And they're they're really your main focus, not your quote unquote love life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so so that that takes away from some of the value there, and it's not like a. Uh, it's not like a hard thing. It's just you can look at somebody. Okay, so they did this study and they put a bunch of people in 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 the same room and they were all kind of uh, they they all essentially had numbers. You know, you had people who were tens, you had people who were sixes, you had people who were twos, and then they said, okay, I want you to hook up or you know pair up with the person who matches you. And these people subconsciously matched up with their number or very close to their number. So, you know, people know that there's a level of attractiveness that you, you can meet. And then they know that there's a level of attractiveness that you won't, you know, it's just, it's just truth. Um, and I mean, you don't really see really ugly men with really beautiful women unless the men have some other thing upping their value like they're billionaires you know yeah because you so. can be ugly but if you're rich i mean uh, uh leonardo she has a funny joke and uh, she won't i don't think she'll get mad because i'm not saying the joke but she talks about how like uh nobody's ever made elon musk pull out <laughs> i mean she's got a point He's that's, got she's got a kids. great point that's why i heard her say that i was like she's 100 percent right that's why leonardo is so funny she's a great comedian <laughs> um but because he's so rich, like even if you're weird, money can overcome everything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean he's he's a good looking guy too. He's definitely yeah, he's not, not he's not a bad looking guy. But I mean, money. I think she was trying to make the point that money is like you know it supersedes everything. Yeah, I mean, look at uh, Jeff Bezos is uh, 
definitely not my idea of attractive. Yeah, but Lauren Sanchez is, you think Lauren Sanchez is hot? She looks like the, the one of those Twin Peaks waitresses. Oh, I love her. Yeah, she, uh, she... She has a big booty Latina. She has a big booty Latina, which I do like, but she's for a billionaire. I mean, isn't she like the same age? Don't you think you would get with like a Leonardo DiCaprio vibes, like some young girl that's, you know, coming up, a famous girl, not like a, a, wasn't she Gavin Newsom's ex-wife? That's Kimberly Guilfoyle. Whatever. She's yeah. Tony Gonzalez's ex-wife. Hey, Tony Gonzalez's ex-wife. Yes, yes. The pro Very football. different. <laughs> Tony Gonzalez is a pro NFL player. Yeah. And he was six foot six. He was in a Hall of Fame tight end. Yeah. So imagine, I'm imagine he's probably a freak nature in in bed. You think Jeff <laughs> Bezos can be a Hall of Fame athlete? You think? No, he can, I. You think he smashes as hard as Tony Gonzalez? <laughs> no, he's he's like he's got Bill Gates energy more than uh, Elon Musk or Tony Gonzalez energy. Do you think Definitely. it's possible that Lauren Sanchez was? The sex was so hard with Tony Gonzalez that she needed to have sex with a guy with a smaller package and less force because of the atrophy in her vagina. Yeah, I mean, it takes some time to heal that area. It's very sensitive, you know, so she's moving on with her life and she's like, all right, you know, what? I need to I need to take a break. We need to tone this down for a little bit. I need I need some some recovery time. Some people say, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. Is that true? Um, I think it's like riding a bike. Yeah, elaborate. <laughs> so I don't know how to ride a bike, so I don't know. Oh, okay. Um, so, so if you, if you don't use it, you lose it. It would say that you forget how to do it. And I, I think that, you know, it's so... It's so awesome that how could you forget how to do it? What if you got amnesia? Uh, I think that's I think that's a core memory. What if you fell off a boat and then you almost drowned and then they recovered you and you had amnesia? You think you can still know how to do that? No, no, because I, I you when you have amnesia, you tend to remember your core memories. So you have crazy deep memories, things that are. Uh, familiar with you always you, you more lose like your short-term memory or your memory over the last like three years and then there's those people who do lose have no idea who they are and everything but that's much more rare usually it's more of a short term jimmy my producer the one that is the worst producer ever he was actually a virgin mm -hmm. until marriage that's true that's no joke wow it, does that mean he's a high value male because he's not like he's very low value i mean very low value and when he shaves his beard his face is so <laughs> ugly. I mean, it's he's one of the ugliest employees at this whole company. When he shaves. Um, he looks okay right now, but when he shaves, he becomes literally, people are like, oh my God. People look at him and they think he's a vagrant, like that we just let in. No, it's scary. It is scary because Jimmy has no chin and his neck and yeah. the whole... It, it, it's, it's He looks it's like a <laughs> Muppet character, mm. almost. A Muppet? Um, I think... Are there any Muppets that are high value men? That's what we have to get down to the oh, bottom. Oscar of. the Grouch for sure. Yeah, he's probably high value. He's pretty high value. Yeah, Cookie Monster, pretty high value. Yeah, true. You know, um, those uh, Statler and Waldorf who are up in the balcony are wicked high value. I mean, well, they're, Bert they're and Ernie are gay, though. Isn't that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that definitely. is true. I'm not kidding. Isn't one of Bert and Ernie, aren't yep. one of them gay? Yep. I mean, they're both, they're, they're both gay. They're gay for each other. Yeah. No, I know we're just joking right now, but I think there is a gay Muppet. Google it, Brandon. No, Google well that, no, Bert and Ernie are a gay couple. Yeah, they live together. Did they actually officially admit this? Yeah. I don't know if they're still closeted or not. I think that they came out and said they weren't, and then somebody else came out and said they were from the same company. So wow. I think it depends on the agenda. You know, it can <clears> be whoever, however you want it to be. They did come out with a homeless muppet and they said this is the first homeless muppet ever and i mean oscar the grouch has been lives in a, in a trash, trash can but they like ignored him so they could do a homeless muppet oh. is a homeless muppet like begging for change or like what is what makes him homeless and it was just a muppet that didn't have a home and they it was just a cameo they never showed the muppet again but um oscar the grouch he's a staple of homelessness he literally i mean i guess he technically has a home as a trash can but he doesn't have a house.
Alex, can I ask Josie a quick question about one of her viral tweets? Mm, yes. Um, can you expand on why you think the Constitution says we get our own battleships? Because that sounds awesome. Yes. All right. Article. So it's um, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11 of the U.S. Constitution. It says that Congress can issue what's called letters of mark. And this is for if we get into a land war or a sea war, and they can make Americans uh, essentially um, merchants or not merchants, sorry, privateers. Okay. So they can make the Americans privateers by issuing them this letter of mark. And uh, that's essentially would mean that in order to do that, you'd have to have a battleship like you're not going to take your rowboat out you're not going to take your yacht out you need to have a battleship if you're going to fight a war for the country as a privateer so article 1 section 8 clause 11 of the US constitution is the honorary pirate clause of the US constitution what about a battle jet ski yeah absolutely like a jet ski with like mm -hmm. you know like a turret is that the right word turret yeah it issued you a letter of mark, and you're like, all right, well, I just got my jet ski, and it has some guns on it, and that's it. That's that's your weapon, and you're going to go you're gonna go fight China with your, your battle jet ski. I like that. Okay, now a hard question. Uh, show uh, uh, Josie and I, why do they say that libertarians don't want an age of consent? Uh, that goes back to a co-chair from 2014 of the party, I believe, and it was pretty much saying— why do I need a law to tell me not to sleep with children? And it was misinterpreted and built into this thing saying, you don't want an age of consent. What thank, does that mean? But it was. So that's a I'm psyop. Not. Okay, thank God. Because I always, I consider myself a libertarian, really and truly, like, e even more so than conservative, I do think people should be, you know, if they're of age, they should have, you know, uh, more individual rights. And I, I think, like, like, the war on drugs and a lot, I have a lot of crazy views that I think would fit, you know, I would almost call myself more libertarian than conservative. But at the same time, you have like these psyops where people are like, oh, you're a libertarian. That means you don't want age of consent laws. And all of a sudden I'm like, OK, dude, I'm not doing this, bro. I mean, I do want age of consent law. I mean, I do want there to be laws in the book that children are protected. Yeah. I mean, but I yeah. still I'm still a libertarian. Yeah. And that's a passion project of, of mine because children can't consent. And part of being. Uh, libertarian is personal responsibility, accountability, non-aggression, and property rights on top of that. And if it, that's, that's, that's aggression. If you're hurting a child who can't consent, it's our responsibility to protect children. I agree. Okay, now everybody talks about this. All the ladies talk about it. Let's repeal the 19th. Let's repeal the 19th. I mean, give me a break. I honestly, I mean, Hillary Clinton drinks the blood of children, allegedly. Um, but I don't care if women vote. I don't know if they should be president, maybe. Um, like I said, I think that's why Hillary lost, too. I don't think, I think a lot of people are like, I don't want a woman, uh, you know, to be president. But do we really want women to not vote? So what that comes down to is there's really nothing about voting in the U.S. Constitution. And that's because voting was a state's matter and the U.S. Constitution enshrines federal laws. So, or the, the restraints of the federal government. So there's not anything. So that's why the, everything, the, the 15th and the 19th, were added later. So there were states, Wyoming, Colorado, who decided, you know what, women can vote. And that was before the 19th Amendment was passed because you could do that under the 9th Amendment. The 9th Amendment says just because we didn't write it down, it doesn't mean it's not a right. So any of our amendments passed that were pro-individual, pro uh, property rights, anything like that that was passed after the 10th Amendment, you could have done under the 9th Amendment. So so that includes slavery. That includes, uh, you know, or, or, or ending slavery, that sort of thing. Oh, I um, thought you were you pro-slavery right there. So you're, you're not pro-slavery. Yeah. Can, can we show, do we have Bryson's dad on to uh, combat that? He's very anti-slavery. I don't know if we have Yeah, him. let's see if we can get him back on. She, she's very pro-slavery, uh, Darnell. What are your thoughts, Darnell? Um. What's that? I uh, just uh, think it's sad, man. I uh, I hate slavery. You know, I was a slave, um, and my grandfather was a slave. You were a slave. A You're a young man. When were you a slave? Back in the twenties, nineteen twenties. I was a slave picker. Yeah, I just looked good for my age, but I did pick mm -hmm. some slave, pick some, and uh, it wasn't fun. 
And I used to get beat all the time and all that. Do you want to apologize to him, Josie? Uh, he's got to apologize to me first. Yeah, apologize I... to her first. <laughs> Please, Darnell, what? apologize. Apologize for it. I just the way I feel. Okay, no get him off the show. Get him off the show. We can't. Uh, uh, Darnell is acting too crazy. All right, Josie, before I let you go, I got to ask you two. Uh, we love the calendar. We got to ask you. Uh, uh, we got to ask you a hard <laughs> question, though. Um, Nephilim and giants. I've been listening to all this Book of Enoch stuff, and it talks about how you know the angels were casted down, and then uh, what, what, the, the the Nephilim were the offspring of the fallen angels. Because I always kind of forget the order of it. Because I thought like maybe the Nephilim were already here, and then they mated with the fallen angels, and that's how we got humans. But w what are Nephilim to you? The Nephilim are the offspring of the fallen angels that uh, mated with the humans. And they so, so the giants. humans were here, and then, then when the angels had them, they had these huge giants. And they, have you ever seen those rocks or those mountains that look like it was an old human body? Yeah, or that there's some that look like stairs. Yeah, I know. And then there's like old uh, 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 carvings and rocks with like doors that are, you know, 20 foot tall. It wouldn't make sense for a five foot or six foot person to need a door that big. Doesn't make sense. And you know, in some of those Hillary Clinton emails, she actually asked about the Nephilim. In one of the emails, she wanted some some details on the Nephilim. Giants mm -hmm. are real. Jimmy, do you believe in giants? Uh, yes. Because she's a Bible scholar. Yes. <laughs> I, I, Goliath is the main one. That you do believe in Goliath. You, so you think, yeah. you think Goliath had any, did he have a girl Goliath that he was with? <laughs> uh, probably. Was Goliath a Nephilim? Uh, I'm not sure. I actually don't know. Jimmy, do you know anything? Uh, no. Not much. So the, the Nephilim, I mean, I assume that the Nephilim aren't around anymore because they couldn't breed because they were enormous. And I imagine mm -hmm. that didn't fit into women and then they just died off. That would be my guess. Yeah, a, a massively large wing would hurt reproduction. Yeah. Well, you, can, exactly. artificially, you can artificially inseminate them. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. Because you would think about maybe the, we can find Nephilim DNA from an old Nephilim bone and pull it out and create another Nephilim. I feel like the Nephilim, we or maybe the Nephilim had uh, atrophied penis, uh, like uh, or like one Abel. of our like Abel Garcia detransitioner, mm -hmm. and they were so small they were still able to mate with a human, and that's why we have NBA players. Well, that would also be enough to make them want to kill themselves and you know not exist anymore, right? Yeah, I don't know if we can say that word on this show, but well, we want everybody to live a long life. Uh, don't ever, no self harm. Well, do you, is good. you know about Abel Garcia? Yeah. Hypothetical. It, I, Hypothetical. I no, no. She doesn't know who Abel Garcia is, Jimmy. She doesn't well, know all the detransitioners like you. Oh, yeah. Well, I just relate to him in a lot of ways. Yeah. Last question, though, Jersey, before you go, and you're crushing it on Twitter, you're crushing it on the spaces. I think Jimmy, my producer, he's vaccinated, went to Princeton. I think he's an FBI agent. Mm -hmm. Can you? Is he a fed? Jimmy, are you a fed or, or a detransitioner? <laughs> oh gosh, I don't know. It'd be worse. Being a fed, being a fed is much uh, worse. I'm a detransitioner. No. All right. Well, I, I I can I can see that. Yeah, because I can't say if I'm a fed. <laughs> Jimmy, you suck, dude. Okay, Josie, before you go, tell the people where they can find you and how they can support you. You can find me on X at T-R-H-L official, or you can go to TimCast.com and become a member and help support our work over there. Everybody needs to go to TimCast.com, and you need to go to CashBrew.com and get some of this double uh, caffeinated coffee. I was so blessed, and Tim's very nice to you. Tim's obviously very nice to me. I love Tim. Uh, uh, I got his back 1,000%. This coffee, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know this, all the proceeds that we make from this coffee are going to a cat charity uh, because of Mr. Bocus, his cat that he lost, yeah. RIP. And uh, so Tim's helped you out a lot. He's helped me out a lot. I'm very grateful yeah. for Tim Pool. What do you want to say? Say something nice about Tim. I painted a picture of Mr. Bocus for him and sent it to him uh, a couple weeks ago. Gosh, you're so nice. I'm trying to give him one of my kittens. I just had a litter of kittens. Uh, so maybe I might just sneak it up there and leave it and uh, not tell he him. Bet. Yeah, he he. He needs to, he has a void in his heart, and sometimes you fill that with more love. Yeah, he needs a little cat around. It's never bad to have a pussycat around. I know that. Yeah. And before you go, what do you rate Jimmy? What do I rate him? <laughs>
Mm-hmm. I know I'm tan. Guys- you don't tell me that. I know that. What is Jimmy? Can you just put just Jimmy on the screen? Yeah. Uh, you you can be a six point seven like me, Jimmy. Because you what have kids. The- oh, like you? I, if saying I'm as attractive as you, that's pretty damn awesome. And then what do you what do you rate uh, Darnell Gray? Uh, what do you put? Oh, let's let's get Darnell back on. I need to see Darnell. Uh, nine point. Nine, nine point seven. Darnell- <laughs> Darnell, you can also be a 6.7 like me and Jimmy. You're just giving everybody 6.7s. Okay, Josie, you're too nice. We love you. Everybody go follow the Redhead Libertarian, T A wait, T R H L Libertarian at Twitter. On X, excuse me if you're watching this, Elon. I'm sorry. I still call it Twitter. All right. We love you. I know. I have to stop. I have to stop. <laughs> It's hard to break habits. Bye. Bye. All right. We love Josie. Thank God she didn't get mad at anything we did. Thank goodness. Last time was a disaster. Okay. Now we got to get into conspiracy mode. Have you guys seen in Dubai right now? They're having a massive flooding. And they're basically admitting that they're cloud seeding there. Why would they need to cloud seed? Well, cloud seeding is a technology that has actually been around for a while where you can like spray aerosols or they, they do uh, micro fragments that somehow make clouds release water and they actually create clouds. Some clouds are fake. And Jimmy, you probably don't believe that clouds can be fake, do you? Well, I now know it's true. Like, I thought it was just a joke, like, oh, Bill Gates' weather machine. But no, Dubai has a real weather machine. Jimmy, do you really not think people are trying to manipulate the weather? You really don't think that? No, I I think it now. Yeah, I had to come in this morning and explain to Jimmy that that cloud seeding is 100% real. I just never really looked into it. I thought thought it was a joke. But no, it's 100% real. See, look, when presented with evidence, I can change. I just, I mean, I just would think that it would be obvious. I mean, I know you have to be a little bit of a conspiracy theorist, but to think that all they do is talk about climate change, climate change. We hear this, that Mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley, they want to shoot aerosols or uh, graphene or whatever the heck it is to block the sun. Have you heard that conspiracy? I have heard that. And that's not a conspiracy. That's out in the open. Mm -hmm. So we know that they want to modify the heat from the sun. That's the official story. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't you think that they'd want to try to control where the rain goes or if there's make it where there could be less rain or more rain? Yes. I actually do agree with you now. I know that's not as good content, but I agree with you. Finally, you agree with me. I know. I'm trying to learn. Um, and I'm not a Fed. I don't believe that. We're Paul, gonna do- the, the chat overwhelmingly believes Jimmy is a Fed. Yeah, I agree with the chat. And yeah. and speaking of the chat, did we get only one twenty dollar super chat the whole show? We had another one, but it was like saying really rude and terrible things about uh, Josie. So oh, I didn't read it. Don't do that to Josie. God. Yeah, like she's she's a very nice person. She's, she's really very nice. attractive. I kind of feel bad. She thinks she's a six point seven. Like she's better than that. Yeah. Yeah, much better. I liked her camera angle. I didn't say that. I didn't say that either. You're going to get me in trouble. I've gotten in trouble for going to Twin Peaks. I'm not talking about <laughs> camera angles. Uh, speaking of camera angles, we got a great angle of a bunch of migrants in New York City complaining about the free food and hotel that they're getting. Let's play that clip and then we'll get my instant reaction. <laughs> But at the shelter, the food, my kids cannot eat the food at the shelter. And on Ramadan time, we couldn't eat because when you come back for on the breaks, the food is no good at all. And they give us two months to stay at the shelter, and then you have to go out again with your luggages and the kids and find another place. It's very difficult. And also, I have a kid that is like 18 to 19. Until now, he doesn't have no school. So please help us. 
Okay, they're asking for help, and I am empathetic to anybody that needs help. I don't care if they're a Congolese immigrant or if they are uh, an American born here. I actually do want to help out people that need help. But the audacity to go there in the most expensive city in the world, arguably, maybe there's one more expensive city, I don't know, but I, I would say the most expensive city hands down in the United States of America and complain that the food is not good enough that the free hotel rooms that they get to stay at the Roosevelt Hotel are not good enough, and that they want their 19-year-olds to get free education. The audacity of that clip should enrage everybody. Like I just said this, I do want to help out people that are struggling. I'm not against social services, even though I'm conservative. But the idea that those people that are here in New York City complaining about the conditions in New York City when everybody's conditions in New York City is crap. I mean, literally, people are paying $3,000 to live in a shoebox. To, to go to the McDonald's in New York City is $22 for a Big Mac meal. I don't know how we can help these people, but unless we turn off this unlimited faucet of money and resources to illegal immigrants, we're going to lose our country. And to be honest, it might already be too late. I mean, if you really think about this and you look why are so many immigrants coming to America? Because we have an open border policy. You ask yourself, why do we have an open border policy? Because these people that are in power, they want to switch up the entire population and favor their districts by every time an illegal immigrant comes here, they count on the census just as much as a legal immigrant. So they can basically gerrymander these uh, districts and voting districts based on a falsely inflated population. So what's happening in this country is actually sad. I know this is a comedy show, but there's nothing funnier than seeing a woman from the Congo complaining that her 19 year old isn't going to high school. And to be honest, you know, they ought to, they ought to just let them go to high school because then that team will have a bunch of 19 year old kids from the Congo. They'll probably be badass. Give them a fake birth certificate. Nobody will know. But if you watch that clip and you're okay with that, you're just okay with people complaining when they're getting free food, when they're getting a free house, and their son is 19 years old, but they can't go get a job. They can't go work. They can't go move some furniture. I mean, there's lots of low-skill labor in America. The whole service industry is available to people. They can go work in a kitchen. Trust me, every kitchen in the world probably has an illegal immigrant working there. So I just, I just hate that the American dream does not exist anymore. That used to be the dreams. If, if I can make it here, I can make it anywhere. You know, Frank Sinatra singing New York, New York. Now it's like, when I go to New York, if I don't get a free hotel room, I'm gonna go to City Hall and complain. So I wanted to play that video because I cannot even do comedy that is even close to as funny as the entitlement of the people that wanna take your resources from your tax dollars. And that's the same reason I'm mad that we're funding Iran and funding Israel to blow each other up. I don't want to do that. I would like American resources to stay in America. But sadly, this is a reality in which we live in, that illegal immigrants are more entitled to social services than struggling Americans. And that should piss people off. I don't know if it does. Jimmy's probably not pissed. Uh, Brandon's probably not pissed. But I am a little pissed. Can we also just say that their language sounds like someone trying to speak in tongues? Well, I have another clip. I didn't. I should have sent it to you. A woman actually talked about how in the Congo there's 30 different languages and that there are not enough interpreters in New York and that they can't read the documents and that most of the people that are coming. She said this, not me. I mean, let me. I should just pull it up. Let me just so you guys can hear it real quick because we don't have it. See, on this show, it's hard. We, we don't have. Well, hey, you know, before Rob left, did we ever see if we could get it where we could pull stuff up? Um, we kind of can, but it's in an unfortunate position. We need to move some things around. We're, yeah, we're I guess we never got Got, we never got. Well, and while money. you're pulling that up, got a ten dollars super chat from Rabid Wino. Keep we on only read ten dollars. We only read twenty dollars. Well, because the other twenty dollars. I'll read the twenty dollar one. It okay. says, "Nephew," he says, "Here's another twenty dollars super chat because I meant what I said." Look, if you want to hate and keep sending his money, go for it. Yeah, that we love that. Okay, so listen to this. This is a, from that same meeting. We have the evening class for the one that you wear little uh. challenge, especially if you don't understand. Pull out of. Yeah. There are unique dialects that are also coming that I've never heard of that I'm learning now um, about. People from Madagascar are coming. You have people of uh, Burundi are coming. People from countries that are not common to us 
Uh, so language access has been truly, truly a challenge, especially if you don't understand. Polar from Guinea and Polar in Mauritania, Polar in Senegal is very different. So thank you because we have to push for language access because I have seen it, people telling me even to stay in the shelter, to wherever in the herd they cannot stay because when they ask them to um, reapply, they're not getting it. And so thank you for continuing the work. I do want to add on one thing. There is a, um, a significant amount of people who are literate, so written does not work. We have been sending voice clips to the migrants, explaining to them what their rights are and to understand what's going on. So it's not just written, we need vocals. Thank you. May I intervene for that? Because so uh, if you just listened to that's just a minute. The clip's three minutes. I read. I posted it, and we'll, we'll probably react to it tomorrow. Most of the Congolese immigrants are illiterate. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> so they can't even print them. They have to have a physical person there to read it out loud and translate. That's nuts. And I had to address the elephant in the room. You know, the last time we brought over millions of illiterate people from Africa? Oh, gosh. It was during slavery. <laughs> so we're doing modern-day slavery. It's not good. It's not good. Okay, there's a couple $20 super chats. Bad Buddhist. I am mad as heck, and I don't want to take it anymore. Why is Bad Buddhist mad? He's, He's under joking. our top chat rat. He's okay, joking. Good, good, and then good. Nephew sent another chat rat. I'm not hating, just pointing out facts, but I'll keep supporting. I love supporting. LMAO. Okay, awesome. We love your support, nephew. Thank you, nephew. So we want to help out all the Congolese people that are struggling. If you want to stay at Jimmy's house and if you're in Dallas, mm -hmm. you have full room and board at your house. Is that true? Absolutely. And what are we doing tomorrow before we, we end the show? Do we need to tease anything for tomorrow? Well, I think we are going to exact our revenge for... Normal world. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Oh, we're not. not. We're not. Okay, I'm we're just not kidding. doing that. And you never tell Sung Tzu, Art of War. I'm not going to say this right, but you never, you always keep your enemy guessing. I think that's one of them. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to act like we're not going to do anything. Okay, we're going to not, not doing anything. We're just going to take it. Doing anything. Well, mm -hmm. we're not just going to take it. We're just not. We do not have a right to defend ourselves. <sighs> Jimmy, you're such a fed. Okay, guys. <laughs> This has been a great show. Josie was great. I want to say thank you to Bryson's dad for being on here. Um, he was great. Uh, thank you, Darnell. Appreciate sure, sure. Thanks for having me. Oh, um, last twenty dollars super chat. Bad Buddhist. My ancestors had nothing and got nothing when they came to America. Um, thank you, Bad Buddhist, to your ancestors. Thank you to Bad Buddhist's ancestors. All right, guys, we're in the show the same way every time with that freestyle finale. DJ, hit that beat. Yo, I'm a pimp, and I'm on the blimp Redhead libertarians, not a vegetarian And you know I rap so hard And you can see my credit card Swipe it right, swipe it light I don't really care, cause I stay up all night Cause I'm a pimp, and I'm on that blimp When I eat dinner, I only eat shrimp And I walk with a limp every single day I don't know why Jimmy is so gay Hit that like, hit that subscribe If you wanna see Prime Time go live Start the party, that's what you do when you hit that like. I don't really care if you're black or white, just hit that button right freaking now, or I'm gonna have a heart attack and a gal. I love you guys, peace, and good night, my heart's hurting.